Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is Chapter 41 of BNHA Second Generation, and this one is titled High Alert. After politely saying goodbye to Mr. Dofu, Hyoko took his laptop and walked back to the office to get Kana. Saddle up, Kana, we're going to pay Kujin a visit, the winged hero said as he put the laptop down and grabbed a few things to put in his pocket, just in case he might need them. Is it him? Kana assigned. The picture is of Kujin? Yep, Hyoko replied with a grin. Time to take him in for some questioning. The manager of Rare Find walked Sossy down to the back hall to where the vault was and stopped outside the door. This is where we keep most of our private collection. We can't have too many items on display, but if someone comes in and asks for something specifically, then we can check in here to see if we have it. He turned to the door that had a large number pad on it and started to punch in the password for the access. While Soshi was standing behind him, he felt like someone had pushed his arm to get him to step to the side, and he did so to correct his balance, but he also looked to his left to see who was there, and who had pushed him. No one. What the hell was that just now? He wondered, glancing behind him to see if whatever had pushed him had walked behind him. So, the manager continued, pushing the door open. As you can see, it is quite a large vault. Soshi was still looking around a little perplexed as the manager continued to talk. Then the student spied a vent a little behind him on the roof and suddenly it clicked. Oh shit, the thief must be here. He thought as he looked back at the manager who was still talking away and hadn't noticed anything. He must have pushed me out of the way with his quirk so he could see the numbers on the pad and memorize it to get in later. Which would also make me look hella suspicious since I'm here and could possibly have seen the code too. Soshi smiled politely as the manager looked at him again. I need to warn Ginny and Chi about this, he thought, and get the manager to call Condor and Seismic Kana. Choosing to fly to Kujin's house, Hiyoko and Kana alighted near the building complex and then walked the rest of the way. I'm not even sure this is the right address, Hiyoko commented to Kana. He could have made the police person write the wrong address. True, Kana signed. We will have a look anyway. Hiyoko nodded and the pair walked up to the building complex and rang the number on the pad that had been put down as Kujin's address, but no one answered. I'm just going to fly up and have a look in the windows real quick. Hiyoko stretched his wings out and looked up, crouching a little as he raised his wings and then brought them down forcefully and up he shot, taking off up the side of the building. Slowly he circled around as he mentally located where Kujin's room would be and looked in through one of the windows. Everything seemed quiet, no one was at home, so he scanned the room for any identifying documents. Looking across the coffee table that was there, in the small lounge room, he saw a bill addressed to someone. Kujin Akuto was written on the envelope, and he grinned before flying back down to Kana. That's his place, alright, Hyoko said as he dropped down beside his boyfriend. He doesn't appear to be home, though. Hyoko? Kana signed suddenly, a fearful look in his eye. What if Kujin is at rare find now? Oh crap, you're right, Hyoko said as he pulled his phone from his pocket. I need to call the manager. I need to tell him to keep an eye out for anything suspicious. He rang the manager's number and pressed the phone to his ear but no one answered. I think we should fly there and do a check with your quirk, Kana, Hyoko said. You'll be able to tell if anyone's hiding in that building. Kana nodded and stepped in behind Hyoko, holding onto his boyfriend's wing bones. The winged hero smiled and crouched a bit and then reached back to hold Kana to his body before jumping and taking to the sky. Back at Rare Find, Soshi was still on high alert, but didn't want to get caught trying to tell the manager what was going on. I'm pretty sure that the thief is in the vents, he thought. I need to get the manager away from this vent in particular before I tell him anything, otherwise that thief will hear me. The manager kept talking and Soshi nodded before asking a question. Sir, do you have the cleaning equipment here to clean the jewels? Where do you keep that? Soshi asked, hoping it would be in a different room and away from this vent so that he could warn the man. Oh, the manager said. Yes, we do. Come with me and I'll show you where it is. He turned and headed off down the hall, away from the vent, and Soshi glanced around before closing the gap behind the manager and tapping him on the shoulder. Sir, he whispered lowly, the thief is here. We need to call Condor and Seismic Kana. The manager looked at him a moment and then it clicked. We're being robbed, he hissed. Where? Where is he? How do you know he's here? In the vent, sir. He pushed me aside to see what number you'd put in the keypad back there, so that he could get in later, Soshi replied. Please, we need backup. The manager nodded furiously. I will call them now. 
Okay, I'm going to go and tell my classmates to be on the lookout. Soshi said, the pair parting ways to go and attend to their respective duties. The white-haired student quickly made his way to the front of the shop area and got Ginny and Chi's attention, then beckoned them to come to him so that they could talk. What's up, Sokin? Ginny asked once they were in an area with no vents. The thief is here, he said, looking from Ginny to Chi. How do you know? Chi asked pointedly. I felt someone push me aside when the manager was putting his pin into the jewel vault pad, Soshi said softly. The manager is calling Condor and Seismic Khan right now, but we need to be on high alert. Ginny nodded with a giant grin on her face. Oh my god, a real mission! The thief is actually here! And it's all starting to come to a head. That was chapter 41. Stay tuned for chapter 42 coming tomorrow.